Hi, it's uh, Paul Beckwith. I'm at the University of Ottawa in the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. And uh, I'm going to give an update on uh, what's happening um, around the uh, planet with the uh, climate system. Um, with the uh, Super El Nino that's occurring, um, with the sea ice uh, loss, and uh, the ramifications for, you know, the, the near-term and mid-term uh, future. So uh, things, um, you know, the last few weeks have actually been pretty gloomy on the uh, climate system front. So to set the mood here, uh, this is, uh, you know, this is the best uh, way I could think of doing it. Um, so, you know, as gloomy as it might get, um, you know, in terms of the massive fires in Alaska and northern Canada, all that, all the all that carbon sink, you know, disappearing, being replaced by, you know, dark, um, at, dark, dark, uh, burned out forest regions, increasing permafrost melt, etc. You know, the massive drought in California that's ongoing. Also, things like um, the uh, the droughts extending to Canada. Um, so, so we've got the breadbasket of the U.S. in trouble in terms of food production. We've got the breadbasket of Canada now starting to, to be hit hard. So with all of these this gloom and doom, um, the key thing to remember is that there's over 7 billion of us on this planet. And we individually, we have the power to effect change, whether it be to replace all our lights with LEDs, to lobby politicians with, through a group like Citizens Climate Lobby, um, to push politicians for a fee and dividend, renewable energies, you know, each of us had, had, has different skills to bring to the table. So, you know, just do something, whether it's for this video or, or do a video of your own or, uh, you know, talk to people about it. We can't ignore this problem. We're, we're in a time of consequences. You know, the idea of stuff happening by 2100, throw that out the window. It's happening now. Uh, I think abrupt climate change is, is, is underway. So, um, uh, so I'm going to talk, uh, so we'll get rid of this prop, right? Enough doom and gloom. Um, let's look at the, uh, overall, uh, climate system for a start. Okay. So, um, this is a poster that I did a couple of years ago. Um, the climate science. Uh, basics so greenhouse gases up warming up sea ice melts arctic warming is amplified methane's released that gives you more warming snow cover is also lost that gives you more warming the arctic region is getting darker um, the temperature difference decreases um, between the arctic and the equator so the jet stream um, moves location, bends, becomes persistent and stuck. We get extreme weather events. Um, so we get fires, massive fires, greenhouse gases up. We also get uh, crops uh, failing, which we're seeing. And then the censored version, all heck breaks loose. And of course, uh, you know, the uncensored version, all hell breaks loose. Okay, so this is the gist of what's going on. So. Let's have a look at uh, some of the uh, data here. Okay, so let's move the camera back and get a decent view. So, so this is a map of the entire Arctic looking down. And this is the uh, uh, sea ice um, concentration. Um, so uh, this is all sea ice, very few gaps, 100%. We get down here and we're 50% and under. Um, so, so that would be half of this region would be sea ice, half would be open water. Um, so what we're seeing is uh, big huge bites and chunks are being taken out of the um, sea ice. Um, this is uh, Alaska, this is Siberia, the Bering Strait. So there's warm water coming in here that's chipping away at the ice, melting the ice from below, and of course very warm air temperatures that are melting it from above. Um, there's some export through the Fram Strait, but this is what we're happening, this is what we see today. Um, this is another view of it, so you can see the ice is being uh, attacked significantly 
from this side here. Um, now, if we look at this view, this is a, a mess, basically. Um, this is a very strong Super Nino. Look at these temperature anomalies, four to eight degrees is this scale here. Very, very hot water. But the entire Pacific is warm. Um, and there's this, the, this is the blob that people, scientists have been talking about. And there's very warm water, there, there's huge, warm water here and look at the water up here going up through the Bering Strait you know four to eight degrees warmer than normal and that's been taking out the ice this is another view um, this is climate reanalyzer um, the El Nino here the very warm water and uh, you can get another view the key thing here is 0.83 degrees Celsius is the anomaly that's um, so that whole the whole North Pacific is 0.83 degrees warmer than normal. Um, it takes a huge amount of energy to heat water. This is a surface um, temp sea surface temperature, so it's at the surface. But this warm water goes down at least a couple hundred meters. If you can cal if you calculate the amount of heat that that represents, that heat going in the air, you know, sends the temperature uh, soaring. This is a global view, um, so you get this pattern, and this is typically, um, this warmer area here, cooler here, is a typical El Nino, but there's lots of other stuff going on here. There's nothing normal about this situation. Um, this is, this is uh, Earth uh, Null School, and uh, what you can do is you can see, I can zoom in on here, and you can see that the, uh, wa this is the water temperature, um, anomaly, six degrees warmer than normal. Look at this really warm water off Greenland, not doing, not doing the ice uh, sheets any favors. You know, really warm water almost up to Svalbard, you know, and in this region, the whole region between Svalbard and Iceland. And if we look at the um, actual temperatures as opposed to the anomalies, then you can see, look how warm this water is, almost 10 degrees Celsius. You know, really warm water here. And this water is just ch cutting away, going underneath, cutting away at that ice, because the flow is this way. The sea surface height is higher here, lower here, so you generally get the flow coming through here. Um, this is a view of, um, this is the Naval Research Lab data. So this is the sea ice thickness black being the thickest ice and then green's about three three and a half meters and this blue is two two to two and a half okay so this is the thickness in meters and what you can see is this is the date so 2015 oh the month the day and it cycles through about a month and you can see what happens when it jumps it starts at the beginning and look at this ice here completely destroyed Okay, and you can see quickly, this is happening in a month. Um, and uh, so this is July, we still have two more cycles. We have this, we have another month to, to mid to late August, and then another mo month, mid to late September. Normally the sea ice minimum is mid September. Um, so a couple more months of this, so what can happen? I mean, with all this green being hammered, there's almost no black left, there's almost no red left. Um, the idea that remnants of ice will be left here for a long period of time, I'd say throw that out the window. There's not much export through the Fram Strait, it's just melting from warm water underneath and warm air temperatures above. Not too much export um, through Nair Strait or Fram Strait. Um, this is uh, a view of the ice concentration cycling with time. So again, you can see how quickly the ice is vanishing. So you can just, you know, this is over a month. Uh, you know, how much ice is going to be left in September? You know, it's anybody's call. Uh, it depends a lot on what the, the meteorology is like and where the ocean currents are going and stuff. But with the El Nino developing into a stronger and stronger super El Nino, if we get a lot more water coming in here, you know, it is possible it can take out the whole thing. Again, this decline is over a month, and we've got two more months of this, even warmer, more higher temperatures than what, have, what has done this. 
So this is concentration again. This is um, cycles through pretty quickly, but this motion, you can see these arrows. This is the motion of the ice, the ice speed. And so the ice is moving. This is how the actual ice is moving in centimeters per second. You know, so the fast speeds are here. So often you can see these fast speeds that are pushing the ice this way. So there is still some export, but it is slowed down. Um, so again, this is over over a month. So what we had in 2012 is we had this massive cyclone that persisted for 10 days or so, and it ripped up the ice. So a similar event now with the weakened ice would pretty much uh, port the whole stuff out. So, you know, we could lose all the ice if we had a couple of these uh, cyclone events. 